Hello, and uh, we're looking at, a, I suppose, a foreparent of cow children today because it's one of the uh, earliest westerns that I ever tried to make, and it is a computer game called Shooty Drinky Town. I wrote it in QBasic. I was not good at QBasic. I am still not good at QBasic. Um, for the uninitiated, that is uh, quick beginners all purpose symbolic instruction code, and it looks like this. And it is a source of good art. Back in 1992, this was where you could make games, and it was astonishing. Uh, and that's only 20 years before I made Shushi Drinky Town in it, at which point it was the obsolete, but it remains the only language I've learnt. I'd like to rectify this. And when I say learnt, you will see that this is a, uh, a troubled and buggy uh, program. I don't have a lot of bass files, which is basic files. I don't even have bananas.bass, or maybe gorilla.bass, the one where the gorillas throw the bananas over the buildings. I only have shooty.bass, and this is it. So I'm going to talk you through it. I'm going to talk you through from the inside out, rather than just showing you the game, which is not very good and doesn't play very well. I'm going to show you, I think this is all set up quite poorly. So, uh, shooty drinky town. The actual, oh, I can't scroll, I can't scroll with my mouse because this is DOS, of course. Um, so that is the first thing you see. Uh, a game by Ben Swithin from an idea by Chris Bambling. Well, that pins it down as uh, 2012. Um, so I start out defining all of the necessary variables. I'm not sure you're meant to do this in files. And I think possibly the first time you introduce them and maybe it is let cash equal zero rather than just saying cash equals zero that may be why i could never get this file to compile but anyway you come in with no cash with no visit what's visit i don't know presumably oh you you visit something beginning with s you haven't sung the song yet you are one drunk already your bladder is zero we later learn this is measured in bladderines mine zero so you have no experience in the mine tex is one Te I, I think Tex is the big villain you need to beat eventually. Your experience is zero. I've, I did terrible things with the experience system, as you will see. Basically, I didn't... A lot of games, I sort of look at how experienced you are and you gain XP and you get more options as you get more experienced. Um, but in this, I just thought, well, I don't want you to have full access to everything. So I'll just wait till you've done some stuff uh, before you're allowed to go and buy a gun before you're allowed to go to the brothel, uh, before you're um, allowed to hurdy gurdy hurdy gurdy Certain drinks you can only get when you have certain experience, but it sort of comes in randomly. There are certain things, I think if you go in a certain shop, it gives you experience. But if you ride around and actually do things, it doesn't. And you start out with four limbs. Limbs are health in this, so... Um, you can have as many as six if you get really well healed by the doctor. The, the doctor scenes in this very much inspired by VGA minor. Uh, kills, zero. Kills is important. If you have too many kills, then it affects your sin level, which comes up later. And in a way that is never apparent within the game, that can make it impossible for you to win. In order to beat the big baddie, you have to guess, really, that there is a particular number that you need to he reach for. You need to be a particular drunkenness within a certain range, not too much, not too sober. You need to have sins relatively low. You can fix that in the chapel. And you need to have not killed too many people. And you have no gun at the moment. You have to buy the curtains. And love is also zero. You have my sympathy. So here is the... Uh, the start of the game, and it looks a little bit something like this. Welcome to Shooty Drinky Town, population 85. <laughs> I'm very pleased that I've got colours in here. I like teal more than most people do. I consider it a kind of blue, not a kind of green, but I know there's some disagreement on this. Howdy, partner. Please enter your name. And I think if I put anything with a comma there, it won't work. We do from start. Yeah, because with QBasic, with the most simple sort of input blah 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 if you put anything in with a um oh it accepts semicolon as a name about well that's our name now that's fine but if you put a comma in it doesn't work i'm pretty sure there's a better sort of input you can do in qbasic and basic in general you may have heard of visual basic um 
that uh, that uh, allows you to do more complex writing in things. But basically, if you put a comma in, it messes up the way I've been doing it. So welcome to town. You're in the street of shooty, drinky town. And there's not much you can do. Ride a horse, eat a horse, go into that there saloon. I have a feeling eat a horse gives you no good response at the start, but either a really good or a really bad response later. So I'm going to eat a horse. Don't be stu stupid. Eat a horse. Let's try it again. Don't be so stupid. Eat a horse. I'm going to try it a few times because I have a feeling. Uh, does someone come out and kill you if you do it too often? Or does someone come and give you some money? It'll be something like eight times. It's possible that genuinely nothing happens. Or that if you do it when you have more experience, something happens. It's just everything in this game is very obscure. No, it's, it's having no impact at all. Okay. Ride a horse. I drew this picture in glorious ASCII art. I think the, uh, the cactus image here is drawn with one of my favorite ASCII thingamies. It's Alt-178, I think. Alt-176 on the numpad gives you one of these blocks, Alt-177 or Alt-178. They're really good for borders. Back in the day when we were DOS-based, if you wanted to make a bat file, which is a batch file, which is just a file where you type the name of it, and then it runs all those DOS commands. You could use those for borders, for menus and things. And I've drawn the cactus with that. And I think it is not only the best cactus I've ever drawn, that is definitely the best horse I've ever drawn. And I will never better it. It does have a he head a bit like a hippo. But hippo does mean horse in Greek, I believe. You saddle up the horse and ride it through the town. On your left, a chapel, gold prospectors, drunkards, coffin makers. On your right, the low sun, old gr cow hands, grizzled grannies, a gunsmith and a sword jones. That's a joke. Um, you ride out of town. Sally forth. Which way do you want to ride? I don't know which way matters, but one of the ways, the Mystic East. Behold, the Tower of Rassilon. Perhaps this is the game of Rassilon. This is from uh, The Five Doctors, Doctor Who's 1983, uh, I was going to say Christmas special, no, just special, it's the 20th anniversary, and these days I repent me of my inclination to put cultural references in everything. When I was making this, I found there was nothing more amusing than putting a sly knowing reference to something better, but I have become less comfortable doing that these days. I feel like if I have set up a world and I suddenly go on, oh, here's a, a sly reference to Doctor Who or something that the characters can't possibly know about, but the reader does, I find that annoys me. It's okay when some people do it, but here I would not do so in Cow Children. I want Cow Children, even at its most absurd, to, to seem disconnected from the 21st culturey and the 20th century culturey, we all, culturey, 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 we all know. Uh, so I would not have the Tower of Rassilon, but I do like this illustration of it. Um, in the Five Doctors, you see the Tower of Rassilon, it goes, oh, uh, in the music, which I assumed was horns when I first saw it, but I think it's actually an organ. Uh, so that's what happens if you go east. Oh, and you're collared by a cowboy. An angry cowboy runs up to you and berates you for stealing his prize horse, Hillary. He hits you on the head with a spittoon, and for some reason this causes you to break a limb. Now, 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 have three working limbs. You decide to head back to town. I think that's a wise decision and a good reason not to ride east. And I think if you ride north, south, or east, they all tell you you're at the Tower of Rassilon, because I never implemented the parts of the game that would take you other ways. I do have the capacity to go to the doctor now, but I don't have the cash. So if I attempt it, it will say, no, if I, if, I, if I attempt it, it does nothing. Why is that not working? Maybe I just don't have the money, so it won't let me. So eat a horse. Don't be so stupid, eat a horse. Okay. Old Man McCain's Saloon and Wine Lodge. Interminable music plays on the piano analog. A horse nibbles at the curtains. This feels like home. Beady-eyed cowboys gaze at you warily. So, uh, you got to buy a drink. I drew this uh, this person. Uh, this is the bartender, Buddy. Oh, hey, you know, have enough dollars to be served in a saloon, laddie. Away with you till you can find your extravagant drinking habits, mon. His scotch. 
Although I think in some dialogue he may reveal himself to be Welsh. Um, if I try it again, I get the same thing. I've got to try everything a few times. If you sing the ballad of the Last Chance Saloon, it's not very entertaining, but it's colourful. A Mexican runs to you exclaiming, Senor, Senor, you have cured my ham. And basically gives you some stereotype and a $50. Alas, if you try it again, thinking, oh, $50, that's nice. I'll have that again, please. A fat man with a pig under either arm approaches you. We done heard that one before, says he. Then he shoots you until you die. You left the game with a pitiful $50, zero guns and one drunkenness. You never owned a gold mine. The outlaw villain is still afoot. You never tasted special whiskey. You killed zero people. And that's, that's respectable in a way. And that's it. Oh, press escape to end this agony. So that is Shooty Drinky Town. I'll take you through from the inside because I can't remember how to access a lot of it. Um, so, if limbs are less than one, go to 895. You'll notice these are all numbered 20, 21. I have a lot of go to in this. I have heard it said, and I think with good reason, that you should never, ever, 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 ever include go to in a program. There's always a better way to do it. Um, I never learned the better way to do it. I probably should learn that if at some point I'd like to remake Shooty Drinky Town in a non Q basic thing so I can actually compile it and release. I mean, it's not a, it's a troubled game in some ways, but I'd like it if it existed in the world in a greater form than this. I think talking through it is probably more entertaining than playing it, but I will advance. But yes, if you have fewer than li one limbs, then you go to 895, which is presumably where you die of it. Um, if your love is zero, then that XF equals a uh, random integer times seven plus one. Um, and then it does that again. And you may wonder, what? Why? Why? Because obviously this is getting a random number, and then it's getting another random number. Uh, immediately, and doing nothing with either of them, and it's not even used in the scene, I think. I believe it's because there is a random number generator in it somewhere. But every time I played through, it came up with the same random numbers each time. Uh, and I think that could be because it's not compiled and I'm just running it in the QBasic shell. Is shell the right word? Um, and so what I did was every time you go back to the main uh, screen, which is this one where you can choose all the things, it twice generates a random number. And every time you go into the saloon, I think it once generates a random number, meaning that it will be random by dint of you having gone to different places a different number of times, even if it's not actually random. It's the same ostensibly random number each time. So that is my attempt to, that is my workaround. I think it is not an elegant workaround. Uh, if you have any programming experience, my apology. Lots of ifs and thens. I do like if and then and else. Uh, it always pains me if you go to uh, see um, the pharmacist and say, doctor, doctor, can I have Hedy Gurdy? And they say, oh, if you just wait over here. And I always want to say, then else, if you can wait over here, then you'll get it, else you won't get it. Else being, if you don't wait here, the only thing that's probably an else down here. There's no else. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, and you input your choice. So your options are horse, eat a horse, go to that salon, go to the doctor. If you have a greater experience than zero, if you have three, you can sober yourself up um, if you're drunk. Uh, secrets, if, oh, if you have uh, a secret, you can go to the gunsmith. I can't remember what the secrets are, but we're gonna find out together. Um, you can go to the bordello and the chapel, which both have commendable reasons to be there. Um, basically, you type in a number and you press enter. There's a proper way of doing it, I think, where just it reads the key you hit and you go straight there. But the way I did it was you enter a key you press enter, or you enter key, and then you could type a whole novel, well, a paragraph, provided there's no comma in it, um, and press enter, and it would do nothing. So I think my way of doing it is just this choice string is non-optimal. Okay. Oh, and if you have more cash than zero, uh, and you try and eat a horse, you actually lose money in tax for trying to eat a horse, and there is no good solution to eating a horse. Okay, now we know. Um, 
loop until n key equals 43 is the ASCII code for plus. Ah, in this I worked out the one occasion of how to have it as soon as you press plus, it goes to the place it should go to. So that's the proper way of doing it, but I never learned. I just looked it up and then forgot. Um, yes. So this is when you first arrive into town and it asks you what your name is. And, oh no, it doesn't ask you what your name is here. It asks you way up at the top. But if your name is Simon Bolivar, who, when I wrote this, I believe to be pronounced Simon Bolivar, which I think is a funnier sounding name. If you are playing a Simon Bolivar, uh, then you get a gun, you get a ton of experience, um, more than 64 and a half thousand more than you need in this game at any point. Uh, if you're Simon Bolivar, you also get $60,000, which is enough to do anything you want. I don't know who Simon Bolivar was. I imagine he discovered Bolivia. That seems very likely. He was presumably Portuguese or maybe Spanish. And I bet I've read that he discovered numerous countries. But Bolivia is the one that's named after him. Uh, a horse ride. This is the, the horse I drew. Ain't it cute? Um outside of town. The Mystic East, yes, this is how it goes. You just print each line. You uh, you specify the colour for bits. So colour 15 is white, pretty dull. Colour 13 is magenta, one of the beautifulest colours in the world. Um, behold the Tower of Rassilon. I should have made it play some music to go at that point, but I did not. So uh, your sins increase if you go and see the Tower of Rassilon, your sins are up by one. Everything ends go to 99. Again, I'm told you shouldn't go to. You should, you should go sub. You should have ifs while. You should have some brackets that close. I intend to discover this. I would like to learn a language that's not QBasic. Because QBasic is in, in a way outdated. Uh, if you're too drunk to ride the horse, you're too drunk to ride the horse and too fat to toddle, you collapse in the dust and break a limb. You now have limbs, limbs. Should limbs have a dollar sign by it because it's a, uh, a string? I don't think so. It's a variable. Too fat to toddle was the name of a TV show uh, condemning young children, but especially their parents, for uh, feeding up, feeding them up, feeding them up feeding them up good. Um, I never watched it. I don't like such programs, but the title is wonderful. And so here it is. Uh, Ram Secrets? What does REM mean in Q Basic? Remember? Rem rem remote? It's like revoke. Remote? It's kind of remote the secrets. I can't remember. Oh, if you have enough secrets, and if you have a gun, then uh, you ride out to get Tex Louisiana, uh, who of course has two states in his name. In the distance you spy, this is towards the end of the game, because you die immediately after this if you didn't play your cards right. In the distance you spy Tex's encampment. Now to take the man out, you will need the right blend of fight experience, drunkenness, sobriety, and luck. Right. Luck is where the random number generator really comes in. Fight experience, it does, it does tell you this, so it's good to have had fights. It's actually good to have a few fights, lose them, don't kill anyone, uh, get drunk, don't get too sober, go to the toilet, as will become apparent, and then be lucky. And if you've killed too many people, your conscience might make you tremble too much to shoot straight at the West's most famous villain. So how about it, Simon Bolivar? Do you think you can take him, or do you want to head back to town to get healthy, get experienced, and try not to damage your chances by raising the fatalities under your hand? So, there is actually an explicit warning there. Don't get too killy, even though it's shooty, shooty drinky town. Don't overdo either of those things, in art as in life. So, option two will, uh, will allow you to stroll down to camp and shoot tax in the back. Um, apparently that's not really a great option to, to shoot him other than that. As, uh, as one of the Clantons would say, Never figured you're for a backshoot of Johnny Ringo! Um, that's in Doctor Who, The Gunfighters, an entertaining 1966 story that has a very poor reputation, and is better than its reputation. But it's quite annoying. And, um, 
if you choose one and you go back to 20, but if you don't, then your experience gets divided by your kills plus one, W, and then that number is multiplied by how drunk you are. And then X is a random number plus 10, so you get plus 10 to the random number. X multiplied by the number of limbs quartered that you have, so your overall health is your limbs quartered. Um, and that gives you the letter Z. And if Z is under 13, you go to 120, uh, which is disaster, which I think is not good. But if it's over 25, go to 140. It's weird that I've set it up that you've got to have those precise things, but then also random number plays a huge impact in that. Um, but it does look like it's really worth making sure you go to the doctor directly before you do this. So utter disaster. Uh, uh, tech shoots you dead. You're a loser. That's what they said to me when I was at school, and they were right. Um, whereas uh, near success, uh, moderate failure, tech shot you in three limbs and stole all your money. Um, that takes you down to one limb. Interestingly, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't give you the number of limbs you had minus three. It gives you one limb, no matter how many you had. So you could have had six at that point. With your remaining leg, you drag yourself back to town. And if you actually succeed, you get him. So success has crowned your efforts. Um, what's that from? Success has crowned my efforts. Oh, it's Iolanthe by Gobbs and Sullivan. A beautiful woman gives you a £50 note signed by, a $50 note signed by the president. You manage to grow two new limbs in the celebration. Please go forth, return and claim your special whiskey from the saloon. Today, you're a winner. I went through a process of hyphenating today and tomorrow because I realized that's how they used to do it back in, I don't know, pretentious folks, the 20s and 30s, the Victorian era. I don't know. I, I hyphenated today for a very long time. Um, it gives you 500 cash as well. Oh, so it's a $500 note. And limbs explicitly is six now. Um, so if you do go to the doctor, there's a picture of the doctor. Um, they tell you how many working limbs you have. Oh, actually, I think I could show you this through the game again. So, Simon Bolivar. Um, okay, that, that still has given me zero dollars. Or maybe I need to ride a horse to do that. Um, north, yep. Yes, now it's given me the gun and all the stuff I need. So now I can go to, I'll go to the saloon first and I'll buy a drink. So special whiskey, try and get it. Nope, can't do it. Whiskey, cup of tea, mead, vodka, port sling, a mystery drink, X, which I'm pretty sure kills you because it's gasoline. Uh, let's try a cup of tea. You drink the generous measure of tea, English breakfast, if your tastes do not mistake you. Easy on the alcohol, high on the wee makey chemicals. That's important. Um, you know, water and such like. You now have many dollars. Have another drink. I promise I'll go to the doctor in a moment. Um, so, vodka. In Soviet Mexico, five fifty nine thousand nine hundred ninety two dollars have you. Uh, go to the John. Does it let me do this? Yes! The Honest John. You open the cubicle door to reveal the loneliest of toilets. Oh, I am honest. Oh, this I can see this peaking in the audio. Oh, I am honest, John. I only speak the truth. He moans. Please don't use me as a toilet. I was once a prince, but a witch transformed me into a John. Why won't you help me? Now you have a tough decision. Will you, one, use the honest John for bladder relief? Two, talk to honest John? Or three, seek a cure for John's affliction? Number two. Uh, number three, I go out and seek a cure. I'm not going to utilize him because I think when you go to the doctor, I'm going to bother a cowboy. You approach a cowboy at the counter. You wipe your gun on his shoulder, wipe your trouser leg on his whiskey and wipe your nose on his 10 gallon hat. He begins to look annoyed. Hey buddy, you done well, give yourself a good fight. Do you want to shoot to kill, shoot to maim or shoot somebody else? I'll shoot somebody else. To avoid the awkwardness of the fight, you aim your gun wildly and arbitrarily into the saloon's crowd. Bang! It just went off in your hand. You accidentally killed a lovely person. Racked with manslaughter guilt, you steal their money, $11, and attempt to blend into the crowds. Yes, the money is the other place. Let's see what happens if I successfully 
shoot to. Hmm. Who wins the cat with your pistol? You're quite well matched. That is, you're not too drunk. Ah, he shot me. He actually shot me in the ass. <laughs> also, one of my limbs is now broken, hanging off at a disconcerting angle. Excellent. That's what I need, because now we're allowed to go to the doctor if we can leave the saloon. So, go to the doctor. The doctor looks fairly like the uh, the shopkeep. Presently, I have two working limbs. Your bladder is at nine on the Richter scale. You have this much money. You have ten points of drunkenness. Ah, there's quite a few points of drunkenness. It really matters. Tea is quite alcoholic in this. Um, if you have too much drunkenness, you die. If you have too, too much, you fall off a horse when you try to ride it. Um, and if you have too little, you can't achieve some things. Eight bladder is enough to go to John, but not enough uh, 21, which will kill you. Wait, 21 bladder could kill you? Oh, yeah, because that's the bladder and not the... Yeah, you've got to be careful with your bladder and your drunkenness. Uh, but you can sort both of those out. So, number one, heal me, partner. Number two, physician, heal thyself. And number three, go back to town. So, yeah, heal me. Oh. What happens if I say heal thyself? You pull out your trusty pistol and aim it at Dr. Crippen. He tries to blind you with science. Bang! However, you manage to shoot him in the wallet. So he's legally bound to give you $31 in compensation. That is, in fact, the, uh, the, the American medical system. Satire. Uh, let's see what happens if you go to the chapel. The chapel of love. The spring is here and the sky is blue. The birds all sing like they do. Today's the day you'll say, I do. Or is it? What do you want to do? Shout at your computer, please. Go and get married, talk to a ghost, repent, or leave the chapel. Talk to a ghost? Okay. Um, fill the spectre. Okay, apparently I didn't write that content. Only the hilarious heading for it. Uh, go and get married, you say. Okay. You loveless stooge, but you're not in love with anybody. If you find someone in your travels whom you do truly feel you can love, come back and we'll see what we can do. Alternatively, you can buy love at the bordello, but that would be ridiculous, no. It actually is a thing you can do, uh, not merely euphemistically. What happens if you repent? When they said repent, I wonder what they meant, as Leonard Cohen tells us. Not very much, except it reduces your sin count to zero which can make a mathematical difference if you're trying to shoot Tex Louisiana. Okay, let's go to the bordello. I wrote this a long time ago, and I think it's not very uh, uh, progressive in its view of uh, sex workers, nor is it full of condemnation, so it could be worse. Uh, welcome, partner. Welcome to the house of music, dance, and sex bending. Act wisely and soberly, and beware. Around you parade women, beautiful women of all desirable sizes and shapes. Triangular women, minuscule women, man-sized women, two-dimensional, you know, the usual. I think this is still quite a binary way of looking at things. Uh, no, uh, no cruel intent is meant by the prospect of man-sized women. Uh, so you've got a few options here. Admire the curtains, solicit sex, or solicit love. I can't remember what happens if you solicit sex. And I'm not going to try it while you're watching. So uh, what happens if you solicit... What happens if you admire the curtains? Admire a curtain? Don't be stupid. It's a good curtain, though. Let's try a game. Admire a curtain. Don't be stupid. Admire the curtains. Admire a curtain. Don't be stupid. Admire the curtains. My word! What fab curtains, you exclaim, realising at last what a manner of curtain it is that you always desired most. It is very rare for a man to find curtains that he really likes. Again, it's very binary. Even rarer when that man is a cowboy. Sensing the power of the moment, Clint Eastwood rewards you with one hundred dollars, because he could never find curtains that he really liked, and so he trawls America giving cash handouts to those who live the only dream he could only imagine. It's my favorite part of the game. Okay, and if you solicit love, excellent news, Simon Bolivar. It's a magnificent day to fall in love, which is just what you have just done. Yes, for the low, low price of $500 US, you are now in love. The love of your life is a sex worker named Scratchy Dido, which is a uh, character name that I believe is used in Was Miss Expecting More, a Tom Hollingworth album. No one's heard of Tom Hollingworth, but he exists and makes music. He's Chelsea Hare uh, as a musician now. 
uh, although it still goes by the other one for day-to-day -day life. And the two of you make a smashing couple. If you like, you can go and get married in the chapel. Come now, it seems only decent. Leave the bordello, and let's see what happens if we do try to get married in the chapel. Um, do you, Simon Bolivar, take Scratchy Dido to be your lawful wedded wife? There are a number of different names. I think there are eight names for prospective wives. I do, or not on your nelly, Padre. No, not on your nelly. He say no. The man from Del Monte, he say no. Naturally, this is an utter disaster, and Scratchy Dido leaves you for a comedy eunuch. Now, what have you learned? No offense to eunuchs. I understand many people uh, pursue that willfully. The technology behind it. Um, so, I now can't remember what happens if you don't break out. Oh, we could go to the bordello and solicit for love again. Do we get the same uh, bride? An out-of-work actress named Vulgaria. Let's see if we can marry her. Uh, go to the chapel. And we're going to get married. I do. Congratulations, it's a girl. The marriage of Figaro, Simon Bolivar, and Vulgaria went off without undue calamity. You win. Now get out there and have some more adventures. A jolly woman thinks you look awfully thin, so she gives you $300 to buy a nice bit of dinner. That's nice. That's nice. It's good to have dinner. Uh, you generally should. Okay. Gonna sober ourselves up now. By watching downfall. A bad man knocks on his unconscious and takes the vast majority of our money. And um, we should now be sober enough to ride a horse. Okay, I'm gonna go into the saloon. I'm gonna buy some mead. It's horribly sweet. I'm gonna buy some mead. There is currently no way to um, to cure Honest John of his affliction. So let's just try one more time riding out to kill Tex Louisiana. Um, north. Okay, that wasn't what I was expecting. Um, how do you get Tex Louisiana in that case? Uh, ride a horse. South? Is he south of the town? No. Um, ride a horse. Could it be wet? West makes sense. Everything's west. Oh no. Well, it's just not working out. I can't remember how it's done. So that's. Press any key. There's no escape. Press any key. Stop, stop. How do I stop this? Okay, that didn't go quite so excellently. Uh, but we're back. And we're almost through everything in shooty.bass. .bass is just a basic file. The bass stop stand, stands for being as all purpose symbolic. Uh, uh, or something like that. So, you approach a cowboy. Oh yeah, this is where we got up to. Um, so, shooting a cowboy. Okay, things we didn't get round to. Shooting a cowboy. So you're shooting at a cowboy, your hands twitch, ready to whip out your six-shooter. Can you really kill a man? Well, theoretically, yes. Will you succeed? Let's find out. Again, there is a random number. It generates a random number. It generates a different random number. Um, if you're drunk, then it lets the number be... If you're more drunk than seven, it lets the number be higher. But if you're more drunk than 25 or 35, it lets it be a couple lower. But given that there's a pretty wild high numbers up here, it only goes up by one or two. So, drunkenness is neither here nor there, really. Cowboy beats you. Um, he shot you. He actually shot you in the ass. We've already done this before. Um, if you shoot to maim, not to kill, your hands twitch. Um, ready to whip out your six-shooter. You ponder, how to maim a man without killing him? Kneecaps, solar plexus, groin. You settle for the latter and hope not to commit murder through involuntary ignorance of human biology. It is a concern. This is why you must never, ever shoot anybody at all. Um, but probably they shoot you. If, however, you shoot somebody else, uh, to avoid the awkwardness of a fight, you aim your gun wildly and arbitrarily into the saloon's crowd, and you accidentally killed, and then it brings in the random numbers. This is the other place random numbers come up. So you kill a Nazi, a biplan, a communist, a lovely person, a different cowboy, a British royal, Adolf Hitler, the conversation, your only chance of true love, or a robot duplicate of... Name dollar that is a robot duplicate of yourself of Simon Bolivar in this case. You might not be called Simon Bolivar, 
if you are, get in touch. I want to do business. And then you steal their money. So actually, saying you'll shoot a cowboy without shooting someone else is the safest way to make money because you don't get shot doing it. Your sin level goes up, but you can sort that out in the chapel. But you get their cash. Shooting a cowboy, though, is less safe. Um, and you get Y cash. How much is Y? It's a fairly random number that gets whipped up and you get more experience. So that's the game. And uh, basically, you can probably die. The Honest John. Um, there exists an Honest John audio drama, but I'm going to pretend it doesn't exist. I drew this Honest John myself. Um, do, 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 do. Lots of repetition here. I'm sure this is very inefficient. There's probably a way of just, in fact, there's definitely a way of just having the picture that wants um, and then putting them in the text you need. But I program this so inefficiently. I think anyone, even who is good at QBasic, even who is good at any language, will look at this and be low key disgusted. I drew this gun. I've never seen a real gun. Um, oh, yes. If you go to the gunsmith, you can wee in the spittoon, which is the other way to, uh, to reduce your bladderines. You can also buy a gold mine. Um, but that's about the size of it. And if you buy a gun, it is loaded. Oh, you have one. <laughs> Let gun equals gun plus one. Let cash equal cash minus 100. So the really expensive thing in this game is soliciting love uh, in, in life as in art. If you don't have the money, you are thrown away thrown out. Weeing in a spittoon. Um, you're actually congratulated for it. If you wee in the spittoon instead of the Honest John, um, then you are given money so that uh, Matthew Gunsmith can conduct science experiments and invent litmus paper. Uh, litmus paper, which was actually invented in, I'm going to pretend I know this. In fact, I'm not going to Google it because I'm going to pretend it was 1922. So actually, Matthew Gunsmith was ahead of the game. Not this game. The game as in I just lost the game. If you buy a gold mine, you're a proud owner of a gold mine. Um, please look after my gold mine, Mr. Blah, blah, blah. You can only play this as a man, or you can, at least you can only play this as Mr. Somebody. Used to belong to my hairdresser, who I understand received it in lieu of government handouts because they lost all their scissors, so they couldn't work. Uh, you are now the proud owner of a gold mine. Please put on a nice hat. You know, I thought about maybe remaking this in another language better, but I feel like relatively little of it would remain. But it does have glimmers and glints. Glimmers and glints, listener. Glints and glimmers. Um, you could only achieve a little bit of we. Perhaps you should drink more. I understand menstrual drink X is good for increasing your need for the John, but it's only safe to drink it after you've done a jig. Yes, it's gasoline, but if you do a jig before you drink it, then you become able to drink gasoline. Uh, and it really sends your bladder ends up, but not dangerously high. <sighs> Don't know what I was thinking. The random numbers in this are so wild. <laughs> this is not a game you can predictably play. This is a game to lose. Uh, not so much a game to win. Admiring a curtain. My favourite bit of the game. Uh, sex. Oh yeah, you solicit sex. You pay for some sex. It was loveless and noisy, and you're the poorer for it. Perhaps you would enjoy it more if you were in love with the person in question. Time will tell. I understand that enhances the experience tenfold. Maybe more. Tenfold. Like from Danger Mouse. If you're too poor for sex, you're too poor to achieve your stated aim of loveless sex. You may not know it, citizen, but you are one of the lucky ones. In love, a sordid affair. Why is it in love? I mean, why is it a sordid? Um, yeah, if you're too drunk, you are sick on a lady, and let's not dwell on that. Right, the names are Gladys, Mavis, Avril, Gary, Bulgaria, Helen, and Scratchy Dido. Helen, by this spelling, after... Um, Joanna Lumley's pronunciation of the word Helen in Adventure One of Sapphire and Steel. Gary after Gary Lyons, a uh, former lecturer of mine who claimed to have co-created the TV show The Worst Witch, but on my investigation had not done so. Uh, and Gladys and Mavis, cleaning ladies from a play I was once in. I played Gladys. Uh, and they are a railway technician, a sandwich filler, a prostitute, an out-of-work actress, an unpublished writer, a former conservative prime minister, and a Republican heroine. 
I do have an idea for a game I'd love to make one day called Former Prime Minister with a Grudge. I have some notes for it. I have little idea what it would entail, but it would be astonishing. And yes, you can buy love in this game. I'm sure it's possible in life. You can learn to love each other. But there are cheaper ways. Chapel of Love, blah, 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 blah. Oh, yes. Um, the man from Del Monte. What's this all about? Oh, it's when you say no. Um, and so your bride leaves you for a villain, a sure shine boy. Um, oh, leaves you for specifically the name of the villain. So if that was changeable, it would be that. Uh, the vicar, a comedy eunuch, Rabbi Lionel Blue, uh, one of the most famous rabbis at the time of writing this, an anthropomorphic goose, or the Prince of Wales. Now, what have you learned? In retrospect, maybe there should be a place for you to type what you've learned there so that you have to think about it. And then you get money for getting married. Phil Spector, game over, dead. And that's Shooty Drinky Town. That's a Western that I created. I begat it from my loins. I hope you've enjoyed some or all of this digital presentation, um, which in my mind is just going to go on Patreon for the Patreons. But they never watch my videos anyway, so I might just push it on general release at some point. If you're a Patreon and you're reading this, Soz. Soz that I neglect you also. To end with properly, this is the uh, uh, special whiskey scene. So I have already done kill me that the outlaw. I demand my special whiskey, you droll. Give me my special whiskey. I don't went sober to ride me a horse. I done killed an outlaw, bought a gun, and drank some stuff. I ain't too clean a drug. I'm here to play my prize. Out of his trousers, the barkeep draws a pair. Their special bottle. It wasn't meant to sound sexual, but there it is. He pours it into a glass, and the smoke billows from it. You down a large measure, and your insides become your outsides, and your outsides become your insides, and flame billows from your nostril, and the sea billows from your eyes, and earth billows from your trouser leg, and the wind billows from your trumpet. Suddenly, everything seems very much clearer. Gosh, you say, I bet that's the end of the game's contents. You are absolutely correct. End of game. Hooray! But yeah, well, I hope you've enjoyed this, and if you didn't, it's the only one I've got. I haven't written any other games, so there.